Welcome to Classroom Dynamic Shorts, a podcast within the podcast I like to call Bits and Bytes, designed to empower educators like you with quick and practical tips for seamless technology integration in your classroom. Hi everybody, I'm your host Adam Todd and together we'll explore the ever-changing world of educational technology. Bits and Bytes brings you bite-sized episodes lasting five minutes or less, packed with innovative tricks, tools, and strategies to enhance your teaching experience and engage your students through the power of technology. So whether you're a seasoned tech enthusiast or just dipping your toes into the digital waters for the very first time, these short bursts of inspiration will help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of educational technology. So let's integrate bits and bytes into your classroom for a more enriching and impactful learning environment. This is Classroom Dynamics Bits and Bytes, the podcast within the podcast. Calling all educators. Are you ready to inspire creativity and engagement in your students? Unlock their full potential with content creation. Imagine empowering them with cutting edge tools like the Blue Sona microphone from Logitech, which ensures crystal clear audio quality for impactful projects. Logitech offers a full range of content creation solutions from audio equipment and cameras to lighting and editing software. Plus, they have a suite of education solutions tailored for classrooms, elevating the learning experience for students and educators alike. Empower the next generation of creators by exploring the possibilities at Logitech.com slash education today. I think one of the things I'm asked the most during the course of the year and asked by other adults, by the way, is how do I keep my equipment looking so new and working so well? And I tell them straight out, it's responsibility. I'm being responsible for the devices that I have, the equipment that I have that I use every day that I rely on every day. And so I try to do that with the kids as well. Even on the very first day of school, I also do this and remind them throughout the year. But the first day of school explaining to them what responsibility is and taking care of the equipment that they're going to use. Because after all, it's my equipment that I'm lending out and I want to make sure that they're going to be able to use it throughout the year um, the way they would like to use it. So I always make sure that I tell them to hold the devices when they're walking around the room with it with two hands, nice and tight. I must say those words millions of times, nice and tight. And I remind them every time I hand out a laptop or a an iPad or some sort of a device to them, hold it nice and tight. We don't want something falling on the floor and breaking. I also tell them that it's important to make sure that once they get to wherever they're going to work, that they are staying there, that they're working there, that they're not walking or wandering around the room. That just causes more possibilities for something to fall or break, and we don't want that. Um, the other thing that it's really important is I don't let the kids wipe down their equipment. I know it's, you know, since COVID, you everyone wants to wipe down their equipment, and you should, but I think letting them do it is not the best idea. I take control of that and I make sure that I'm wiping it down. I don't want to take a Clorox wipe or something that, you know, a Purell wipe that is soaking wet and it does damage to either the keyboard or one of the ports on the computers. I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that I'm doing it nice and gently and I'm taking care of that. So I don't usually let the kids clean the equipment themselves. But what I do ask them not to do is to not eat or drink near a computer. So no snacks, no water. I know that a lot of teachers like to have them work and have snack at the same time, but I would try to refrain from this with a computer. You don't want an accident because accidents will happen and you don't want water getting onto a device or a drink getting onto a device or something sticky from their hands getting onto a device. It just causes more problems down the line and you don't really want to deal with those kind of things. Um, the other thing that I also mentioned to the kids in terms of responsibility is to make sure that when they're done using their device that they return it to wherever the designated charging station is, whether it's a laptop cart or on the side of the room, and that they're plugged in so that whoever uses the device next has a fully charged device for them. And lastly, they should tell you if there's any damages or anything that happened to it. We all understand and we should all understand that accidents are going to happen. And if they tell you that something happened, it'll be a lot better than had they kept it a secret. Now, I know this all sounds very common sense oriented, but I think sometimes you have to explain to the kids how to be responsible. Don't assume that they know how to be responsible with your equipment. You need to point it out sometimes and go over several times during the course of the year. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. 
I'm Adam Todd, and you've been listening to Classroom Dynamics Bits and Bytes, the podcast within the podcast. You can follow Classroom Dynamics on Twitter at Class Dynamics. If you haven't already, go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you know a teacher who may benefit from today's bite-sized tips, please share it with them. Join me next time for another Classroom Dynamics podcast.